Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at a Game Boy color shader, which was previously created by the guys from Jetly, and which is not going to work the same way as they did in their tutorial with Unity 2022. And furthermore, we will try to test our Game Boy shader within VR. And let's check it out. First of all, if you haven't seen it, please watch the tutorial from Jetty, which shows you how to create the Game Boy shader by first creating a pixelation of the screen. Just trying to find it. Uh, here we go, here's the shader graph. We will basically build the same shader graph, just a little bit easier with a few exceptions. And after that, here we go, here's the pixelation. After that, they're going to add the color palette from the Game Boy with a custom function within Shader Graph. Furthermore, it's mentioned a little bit earlier here, you're going to need a helper script, which is basically made by CodeMonkey. In this case, with Unity 2022.3, we don't have to worry about the script anymore. So Unity already provides us the functionality to create a full screen shader effect, and you don't have to code the only thing you have to write, and I'll show you that afterwards, is the script for the Game Boy color palette, which is also mentioned here. I just extended it for the fifth color. It's basically the same as here, and we will have a look at it afterwards. Furthermore, feel free to check out the video from CodeMonkey on how to make awesome post-processing effects especially when you're using Unity 2019 and 2020 before the support for the full shader effects was added. If you're interested in the topic, there is also a very good video from Gabriel Aguirre, I hope I pronounced it right, um, where he shows how to create the full screen effects um, in a more complicated way than I do, which means Complicated does not mean that it's harder, but it's more versatile. So we're going to keep it very, very simple here, just to give you a quick overview on how this will go. And then I'd say let's go and jump right into Unity. For everyone who is starting from scratch, I already created a tutorial, just check it out here. which allows you to create a virtual reality application within Unity with the URP support, hand tracking, and so on. And this will be the base application for today's video. So check out the video. Um, it's a very short tutorial. Again, this, should, this tutorial will also be very short. And let's jump right into it. So first of all, I have the global volume here. I disabled all of the post-processing effects. Feel free to do the same or just apply some, maybe the, the bloom or the tone mapping or whatever. I also changed the skybox so, can, so we can see the effect of the Game Boy shader afterwards a little bit better. And here is the Game Boy color script where you can see how I divided the colors in my HLSL file on the intensity of the red channel. So this is, as far as I know, basically the same way that Nintendo defined the color palette from the Game Boy, or at least it's a good approximation. I'll just leave it here for a second so you can type and copy that script. And now we're going back to Unity. And first of all, let's create our little shader graph Go on right click, create shader graph URP, and then it's very important to select a full screen shader graph here. And we'll just call it Game Boy Graph Shader. Game Boy Shader Graph Shader. Yeah, whatever. And open it. I'll just maximize this. You can see it a little better. And first of all, 
as we are going to create the pixelation, we're going to create a float variable called pixel size. Click on it and in the graph inspector, just change the mode to slider, default value of 50, the minimum value of 50 and the maximum value of 200. This is the same as in the Jetali tutorial. And this is where the first change comes in. At the full screen shader graph effect, we're able to already access the render texture from the camera and it's a little bit easier to work with it. But first of all, we have to create the pixelation. So we're creating a new node called UV, as you can see it here. And this UV node, let's drag it over here, will be multiplied with our pixel size. Multiply. And then we're going to floor it to have the pixel effect here. And this floored value will then be divided by the pixel size again. There we go. And let's just move this a little bit closer. The values that are created here should be applied to the UVs of our render texture from our camera. So let's add a new node. We can also press space, by the way, to create, to, to open the pop-up menu. And let's say URP sample buffer. So this is our sample buffer. We will just bring in the calculated pixelation. As you can see, everything is now aligned. And the source buffer is not the normal world space, but the blitz source, which is basically a camera and the output will be mapped to the base color. Let's save this asset, minimize the graph again, and let's create a material from this. Right click, create material. Yeah, I'll just leave it like that. And all that's left to do now is to add this to our renderer. So I'm moving over to settings, to the URP high fidelity renderer. You can also create your own. I'm just doing the high fidelity renderer here. Add a renderer feature, a full screen pass renderer feature. And as you can see, the first default value is an invert colors material, which already looks amazing. But we'll just replace that with our shader graph Game Boy shader, and as you can see here in the game view, I'll just drag it up here, to make it so better visible. It's already pixelated, and the same goes for the scene view. So down, down we go, and that that already looks pretty Game Boy-ish. So if we click on the material and maybe bump up the pixel size, although pixel size is maybe not the wrong wording here, it doesn't matter. And this is already pretty, pretty nice. So all that's left to do is now the color palette. And then we're done, basically. If you're going to try this in VR, um, make sure to turn off the pass through at the center eye anchor. I'll just turn it off here because this will not work. The pass through will be overlaid by our full screen effect. You can also manage this within the rendering settings. In the renderer, for instance, the injection point and so on, we'll just keep it at the default values here. And now move on with our shader graph, maximizing. And all we want to do is getting that shader buffer values, apply our custom function to make a game like coloring and then feed it to the base color. So we'll delete this. We'll add a custom function. Here we go. And give it an input. I'll just call it call. This has to match the function of your custom file function, whatever you use. It's a vector three and the output, I'll call it out, is also vector three. 
let's select our file, let's the game by color file. I'll name it game by color. And you see, okay, the source is already applied and it's greenish, more or less greenish. And if we now map the output here and the output of our custom function to the base color, oh, it's not new one, it's um, out. This should be called, sorry. And here we go, you see it's green. I'll just save the asset, go back to Unity, and we see that our color already changed. So this already looks pretty, pretty amazing. And what you will notice, the colors are too bright. So if you're having a look at the Game Boy Color Palette, the darkest green color is not, not visible here. And this is a very simple reason so let's go back to shader graph. This is basically the red color, but it's in HDR and the intensity is too high. So all we have to do now, just collapse this, move this over here, is to map our HDR color to an RGB color. So here we go. Um, color, color space conversion is the node that we wanna use here. And we wanna go to linear and this already looks way better let's go over here let's go here and then map this over here i think we can collapse oh, i'll just leave it open so you can see it here save the asset minimize it again and here we go in the scene view we see that this looks pretty game boyish everything map works out pretty nicely and they can now reduce the pixel size you can see that this is basically not that bad we just leave it at 120. you can play around with these values as well and let's say play maximized if we're now hopping to vr first of all i'll just want to try it out in play mode without starting the VR headset and this is pretty cool. The cube is rotating, it's a simple rotate script on it and it's changing colors. That looks pretty Game Boy-ish, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's minimize this, the value of the pixels and then maximize this again. Yeah, absolutely, that is absolutely perfect and wonderful. So for now, I'm switching to the VR headset and then we're going to try it in VR with hands tracking and everything that's part of it. And here we go. And that's hand tracking in VR with basically transparent hands, a pixelated view. Uh, looking around is always a little bit messy and the skybox is not rendered at the moment. We'll just have a look at it in a second. But as we look at the cube and our hands, it basically works perfect. So let's see if we can fix the skybox issue. Because the center eye anchor is still on solid color. Here we go, skybox. Save it and restart it. Wow, that's much better. So welcome to this perfect color Game Boy World, especially for the retro nights out there. This will be pretty awesome. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you had fun. And if you want to see more of these tutorials, please let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.